the closure. I'm older and I'm moving faster than ever. I'm cold with it, whether for caster, so whether it's falling some more, I'm the master of never. What's up guys? It's Pastor Jordan. As you can tell, this video is gonna be a little bit different. Um, but before I start, if you hear a weird noise in the back, it's my air conditioner. I'm sorry, I need it. It's too hot. I can't make these videos if I'm dying of heat. Uh, but anyways, before we start, let me remind you that I started a podcast and it's not out yet, but I already have two episodes recorded. So we're going to drop soon. It's been crazy. The podcast episodes are really, really, really good. If you love to hear me talk about all these deep, deep issues, you definitely got to check those out because those go even deeper than these videos. Um, if you feel like you could be in the podcast, if you feel like you have something to talk about with me, you feel like you could contribute to that. If you're an artist or an influencer of any kind and you want to be on the podcast, let me know on Instagram. Send me a message. Let me know what you would talk about, why you want to talk about it. Let me know a little bit about yourself. Other than that, today we're reacting to Mac Miller, self-care. I have not reacted to Mac Miller. I've never really even listened to his music, but you guys recommend him a lot. Juice talked about him a lot. A lot of other artists looked up to him, so I'm excited. Um, I've kind of just put it off because I've, like I said, I have a certain amount of time in my days and I try to get what I can get done. So I get the most popular stuff first. I kind of, I don't know. I know it's been stunting my growth, but I'm trying, dude. I'm trying. We're going to get back on it. We're going to start doing more. I have a few people who are editing for me. So if you want to help the channel out by editing some reaction videos of mine, I could record five in a sitting, but I can't. I can't edit them all that fast so if you want to edit you want to help me out a little bit it's super simple i could even teach you but if you're interested let me know join the discord tell me uh, especially if you have at least a basic knowledge of how to edit videos you're perfect that's all i have to say now so let's hop into the video also according to youtube most of you are not subscribed so go ahead hit that subscribe button if you like this video if you like my content you can always unsubscribe if you don't like it or if you change your mind but it really helps me out it really helps the channel out and uh it would mean a lot to me So he's in like a coffin. Yeah. That's like super claustrophobic. That gives you like the vibes of like extreme claustrophobia because he's sitting there like He's stuck in there, you know, he can't get out, he can't really move, you're real constricted. His vibe is way different than like what I thought it would be. I thought he was like, I don't know. I thought he gave not so much like singing, but just like hardcore rap, just like lyric after lyric, bar after bar. And maybe he does that too, but I've never, I never pictured him singing when I saw him, which is crazy because he's good at it. But he said, I switched the time zone, but what do I know? Like basically like I've been all over. I've switched my time zones a lot. I've been all over the place, but I don't, what do I know? Spending nights hitchhiking, where will I go? I could fly home with my eyes closed, but it get kind of hard to see. That's no surprise, though. And then he said, and you could find me. I ain't hiding. Um, I know that he got into, like, a lot of trouble, right? He got into, like, some legal trouble for, like, DUIs, I think. And then, um, especially after he broke up, or him and Ariana Grande broke up, he kind of, like, dipped out on social media. I remember hearing about a lot of that stuff. But I never listened to him as, like, an artist. Um... And then he says, I don't move my feet when I be gliding. I just slide out and then I roll out. And then he's like taking off his shoes. I love the imagery of the video so far though, because he's like stuck in this coffin. Like he's just literally stuck in there and it's claustrophobic. And you see him looking around and like he can barely move to see what's going on. But the imagery of like being so stuck and like choked out and, and I don't know, it's cool. Is a cigarette in his shoe? 
I wonder if that's like, because that would be a place to hide it, you know, if, if it should be in his pocket. So I know he struggled with drugs and stuff, so maybe it's something that he's trying to keep private or, or something that people expect him to keep private. Yeah. Well, climbing over that wall. Yeah. Mm. I remember, yes, I remember, yes, I remember it all. I swear the hype be too tall. Yeah. So like September, I fall. Down, down, down. Down. Mm, that was good. That was good. He said, um, climbing over that wall, which it could be anything, right? It could be, could be anything in your life. It could be something that you're going through, whatever. And then he says, I remember, I remember, I remember that all. And he says, swear the hype be too tall. So like, it was a big deal. So like September, I fall or like you just get over something, you just get done with something. And then on the other side, it's the same thing. It's that same height. You just fall down now. Um, that could almost be like a relapse. Like you spend all this time trying to quit, 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 quit. And then you fail. And it's like you fell just as hard all over again. Um, but good. And then he says, like September, I fall. September is in fall. And then he says, September, like timber is like what you say when you chop something down and make it fall. Uh, bro, those are good lyrics. He's a good writer. I remember, yes, I remember, yes, I remember it all. Swear the hype be too tall. Yeah. So like September, I fall down, down, down below. Now I know that the medicine. And then I feel like to be smoking in there, it's kind of like if you're smoking, you're chilling, right? You're just kind of you're kind of in your in your zone. It's kind of relaxed for you, you know. It's not high anxiety, high tension, high pressure situation when you smoke. You're just kind of there, you know. So for him, it, I feel like it could mean that he's used to being in this space. Or that him being in this space isn't shocking to him. Like, he's not freaking out about it. It's like, okay, this is, I, I know where I'm at. Or, okay, like, this is where I expect it to be. It's not a big deal. So like September, I fall down, down, down below. Now I know that the medicine be on call. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Was feeling like you hot enough to me. He says, down below, now I know that the medicine be on call. Which is like, medicine is like drugs, right? So he's saying, now I, now I know that I can just get it whenever I want. And then he starts talking about how it feels. Let the medicine be on call, yeah. It's feeling like you hot enough to melt, yeah. You can't trust no one, can't even trust yourself, yeah. I love you, I don't love nobody else, yeah. Tell them they can take that bullshit elsewhere. Bro. That's like describing being high, right? And I don't know what drugs he was on. Um, but that's that's the description of being high. It says it feels like you hot enough to melt. So that would be like when you when you're close enough to overdose, you're getting that high. And a lot of people almost edge with that. A lot of people almost ex like experiment with that and, and screw around with that because that's the best high that they're getting. That's the that's the high that takes them to the point where they're forgetting about everything else, right? Get high enough to where you're not gonna die, but you're just you're right on that edge of like your whole body's all screwed up. And he says, Can't trust no one, can't even trust yourself. And so that could be a number of things that could be like trusting who you're buying drugs from that could be when you're high you're feeling kind of anxious you're feeling kind of giddy and like like super um what's the word you guys know what i'm talking about and then he says and i love you i don't love nobody else yeah and so that could be about breakups that could be about ariana grande that could be about the drugs themselves um or about himself like he just doesn't care anymore he's just gonna do whatever he wants that's the thing with artists, man. You, the pressure gets to them. The pressure is a lot. People don't view these artists as people. They just view them as, as entertainers. They just view them as as whatever. But we stop viewing them as artists. That's a really bad thing. Or we stop viewing them as people. That's a really bad thing. It's like dehumanizing somebody to the point that you place all of these expectations on them, but you you only judge them when they fail. You never you never look deeper. You know, if somebody starts failing, somebody when somebody's to the point that they're drunk driving and they're getting DUIs and nothing changes, that person has a problem that they cannot fix themselves. But we don't view people that way. We look at somebody who has a DUI and they, we think, oh, they just don't care about their life. They're just, they're just screwing up. Maybe they need help, but we never take the time to see that. We never take the time to consider that. And we definitely never take the time to act on it. Um, but then he goes on and he says something else here. Fall down, down, down below. Now know that the medicine be on call. Yeah. It's feeling like you hot enough to melt. Yeah. You can't trust no one. Can't even trust yourself. Yeah. Can we just take a minute too and talk about that flow and how good it sounds, bro? 
his voice is, is something else. It's unique, and it just sounds so clean. I'm treating me right. Yeah. Hell yeah. We're gonna be alright. Says, tell them they can take that bull elsewhere. Self care. I'm treating me right. And so he's saying, like, the the people who are there for him, the people who are telling him, hey, like, let's let's get this fixed. Let's deal with this. Like, you you're on some you're on some bull. You're on some crap, man. You're doing the, you're doing wrong. You need to you need to fix it. Let's help you fix it. He's saying, nah, take it elsewhere. He's saying this is this is self care. I'm done. I'm just gonna treat me right. I'm not gonna worry about the consequences. I'm not gonna worry if that puts me in a coffin. I'm not gonna worry if that puts me in a bad place. I'm just gonna do what what feels good in that moment to get rid of that, right? A lot of people think that way. A lot of people just give up and they just get to that point where it's take it elsewhere. I don't care. It's not worth it to me to get over this. It's not worth it for me to deal with it because five seconds alone sober is tough enough, right? You want me to you want me to completely change my life. You want me to completely get over this addiction or get over whatever. And it's tough. It's hard to a lot of people just give up. A lot of people feel like dying is just easier than trying to get off of that track that they're on. And so instead of, of trying to get out of it, instead of trying to do with it, he's just he's chilling in that coffin. He's sitting comfortably. He knows where it's, it's going. He knows where he's at. He doesn't care. Because take it take it elsewhere, right? I'm treating me right. I'm going to be all right. I'm, I'm chilling here. This is how I'm going to deal with it. And... You can be you can obviously know something's wrong, but you just I tried to change it. I tried to fix it. It didn't work. I've been trying. Nothing's changed it. So what else is there for me to do? You know? He's got a lot of really good imagery and a lot of really good writing. And he's able to say a lot with very few words, which is that's a true talent, I think. Hell yeah. We're gonna be alright. Where did the knife come from? Be alright. What do I know? Spend a nice bitch. I can where will I go? I can fly home with my eyes closed. But if you kind of hard to see, there's no surprise though. coffins they had to make to get all these angles right i can think of at least three because the top view you have to have all sides except the top to film and then the side view you had to have all sides except the side to, to film and then the bottom one you had to have all sides except the feet to film and then also to get all that light in there it's really interesting so it looks like one coffin but you have at least at least three going on there or just one that you can take all the different sides off of um, but that's really cool. Yeah, I be reading them signs. I be losing my, I be losing my, I be losing my mind. Yeah, get the fuck out the way. Must be this how to play. It must be nice up above the lights and what a lovely life that I made. Yeah, I know that feeling like it's in my family tree. Yeah, that Mercedes drove me crazy. I was speeding. Some I think he he crashed that car too, right? And I I I have the lyrics right here. And it says that he got arrested for DUI and then hit and run charges, and then everybody thought that this lyric was about that. But he says. He said in an interview, something. Yeah, an interview that he had wrote this beforehand. So that this is just, but that's the thing with artists, right? People think that Juice World predicted his death. Death. They re, they see this and they think that Mac predicted his death. They they see Peep. They think that he predicted his death because the lyrics 
foreshadow that. But the thing is, depending on how you live your life, you kind of know where you're headed, right? You kind of know what, what path you're on. And death takes some people by surprise. But at the same time, some people are living a life that they know is high risk. When you're doing drugs heavily, you know that's high risk. You know that there's a chance that you could die. So death is on your mind much more than for somebody who, who lives a, a normal life. So for Mac, for him to be on drugs, for him to abuse drugs, for him to, to, to drive while drinking, to have crashes, to have close calls, you think that's the first time that, that he had a close call in that car? The first time he had a close call was when he crashed it? No. Right? The, the, the people say about accidents, it's the one that you don't see that gets you. But how many close calls do you have while, drink, dr while drunk driving or, or while being irresponsible that, that you don't crash in? But then you're thinking about it. Then it comes up in your head. So for him to, to make a video like this, it's not surprising to me based off of how he was living, right? And I'm not judging him. I'm not saying anything else. But he didn't predict his death. He just knew that he was living a high-risk lifestyle. And he may not have wanted it. He may not have even agreed with it anymore. He may have been trying to, to get off of it. But when you live in a dangerous way, you know, with things like addiction and other things, death is going to be in your mind a lot more. You're going to be contemplating what that's going to be like. And so for him to say, that Mercedes drove me crazy, I was speeding, somebody saved me from myself, he's obviously, that's not the first time for him, right? That's the first time he got caught. That's the first time that somebody else saw it. But for him, that could have happened three other times. He could have got close calls three other times, you know? Artists overdose and they die, but that's probably not the first time they've had a close call with overdosing, right? He says, I feel hot enough that I could melt. That's the point at which you go and get in a cold shower because you're about, your brain's about to shut down from an overdose, right? That's the point that it's very dangerous. And so he's obviously been kind of playing with death. And it's sad. It's very sad. That Mercedes drove me crazy, I was speeding. Somebody save me from myself, yeah. Tell them they can take that bullshit elsewhere. Self care, we gonna be good. Hell yeah, they letting me. I remember seeing this too, and it means, um, I think it means remember that like death is for all of us, or that everybody dies. Remember that everybody has a time for death. Um, but like short shortened, it just means remember death, right? Memento mori. I don't know. That's crazy. But like I said, it makes sense. It makes sense for him to put himself in a coffin if he already felt like he was on a path that was going to lead there anyways. You know, it wasn't a freak accident. It was a, a, a very destructive lifestyle and a, a very self-destructive lifestyle. And the thing is, it, it, it begins as self-medicating. It begins as just getting high to avoid what we feel, what we think. And it works for a little bit, but then you have to keep going. You have to keep doing more and more stuff. And it kills you slowly. It's a slow, slow death. And it's really sad, but it's so easy to fall into, right? I don't judge anybody who's addicted to something because I don't think that they went into it wanting to be addicted. They went into it trying to escape something. They went into it trying to be cool. Or they went into it doing what other people did. They went into it because they saw other people self-medicating that way. So that's all that they've known. I have nothing but respect for people who are addicted who have gotten clean. Because that is such a tough battle. But if you are addicted, if that's your struggle, you got to stop thinking about the coffin. You have to start thinking about your family. You have to start thinking about your friends. You have to start thinking about your kids or your parents. Don't leave those things behind because you you can't face your thoughts on your own. If you can't face your thoughts on, on, on your own, if you can't face your baggage on your own and your trauma on your own, don't get high. Look for help. Seek genuine help because this will not serve you. Drugs never died for anybody. Drugs never gave a damn about anybody. And I know that in the beginning of the video, it says that I'm a pastor, but I didn't grow up a Christian. I grew up doing drugs. I grew up making mistakes. I grew up getting into things that I shouldn't have gotten into. And there were people there who cared enough about me to say something. But you have to care enough about yourself to not give up. You have to care about enough about yourself to, to get out of that coffin, right? Yeah, they letting me go.
He starts breaking out of the coffin. He's punching. I know this is totally off topic, but people people used to be buried alive in coffins. Like it would happen. Um, they would drink from I don't I don't know if it was tin or some other type of metal in the cups, and it would make them go into a coma. And then, uh, so they would go into a coma. People thought they were dead. They would bury them. And then later on, I think it was grave robbers or somebody started digging up the graves and there were scratch marks on the inside of the coffin. And uh, so then when people died, they would dig a hole straight down and they would attach it to a bell with a string so that if you woke up in your coffin, you could ring the bell and they would dig you back up. Um, that being said, they say that if you are buried in a coffin, I don't think this would work for modern day coffins, but that what you should do is break out of it in your head and then push the dirt down towards your feet and then you can slowly move upwards. Uh, but that's crazy. It's crazy that people actually died that way. Totally off topic though, totally off topic. I just, I thought it was cool. I feel like I, th I have different thoughts, right? I feel like breaking out of the coffin could be literally getting out of that, that personal hell and doing something about it. But when he breaks out of the dirt, it's in this like, like white place, right? Everything's white. So I feel like it could be, it could be real death, right? It could be symbolic that he really did die. And now that he's passed on, it's like a more open place. You know, he's not so confined and constricted and, um, I don't know. It's interesting. Now I see a little different. I was thinking too much. Got stuck in oblivion, yeah, yeah. Oblivion, yeah, yeah. Oblivion, yeah, yeah. I feel like it could also be breaking out of that self-help because he says, I was thinking too much, got stuck in oblivion. Like, I got, I got stuck in my, my own thoughts, my own addictions, my own struggles constricted me so much that I was stuck in this tiny little place and I couldn't move. And finally, I, I broke out of it, and and now it's it's better. I feel I feel like it's different things. I feel like it is death and passing on, and then everything's gone. Right, you're in a better place. But at the same time, I think it is just overcoming these things, these issues in your life, and it's better. Because then he says, I got all the time in the world, so for now I'm just chilling, like, life's not that bad, I'll get over it, things will, things will move on, life's, life goes on, so it's, it's fine. And he says, plus I know it's a beautiful feeling, so like, it's, it's beautiful, you know, life is still beautiful regardless of the bad things. But then he says, in oblivion. So oblivion could be death, oblivion could be passing on to the next life, oblivion could be just getting high. It could be escaping from your issues. Like there's so many different, I feel like the song started here and then it branched off into 20 different options that he could have gone and he didn't, maybe he didn't know which one he was going to take.
fucked up You keep on saying you want love, so tell me are you really down? No, you really down? Yeah. Let's go back to my crib and play some 45 It's safe and yeah, I know that's still a war sign We spend our nights all liquored up on morning sun Can you feel it now? I feel like the explosion could be anything else. That could represent like a single event that was just like the cherry on top. Or like he said in the beginning, I feel like I just got over this really high wall and then bam, then something else hits. Then the fall is just as worse. It just is bad. So he feels like he just climbed out of his grave, just finally got on top of things and then bam, something else happened and it was devastating. Uh, I don't know, dude. Cause he says it's a safe, it's safe in there. I know there's still a war outside, so it could have been that his like personal escape fell through, right? Maybe, maybe the way that you were escaping, maybe the person in your life or the thing in your life that was helping you make it through, fell through, and now you're now you're just kind of going through it. And I feel like maybe it's a, a bigger deal than just one single event because it's slow motion, right? It's not just and that's it. It's the explosion is slow, he's going through it slow. Everything's kind of just slowly happening around him and there's nothing he can do about it. We spend our nights all liquored up on morning sun. Can you feel it now? Oblivion! I also feel like because he didn't cause the explosion, that it gave no indication that he knew the explosion was happening. It just kind of happened to him. He didn't like, you know, feel like maybe if he threw the cigarette down and blew up or he, he did something to interact with the explosion, maybe it would have been different, but it just blew up. I got all the time in the world. So for now, I'm just chilling. Plus, I know it's a, it's a beautiful feeling in oblivion. Yeah, yeah. Maybe I feel like if I knew more about his life too, I could dive even deeper into it. But bro, that was wild. First of all, super talented, super good voice, super good vibes. Like the song is sounds just so good. The way that he does certain like bars and, and everything else, just it's good. But the meaning I feel like is super deep and I don't know, man, it's crazy. I'm glad that you guys suggested him. I'll definitely do more. Um, but fill me in on anything I missed. Fill me in on anything that you see that he's alluding to as far as his life or, or his experiences that I'm missing just because I don't know about him. But um, the imagery is great. I love the music video. I love the idea of being in a coffin because so many people feel like that. I feel like the coffin could have been addiction and then him trying to break out. I also feel like the coffin could have been just life. And then the idea, some people, some people think of death as euphoric because it's just an escape from everything that we deal with. And it's true to an extent, but also not true. You know, your life is not worthless. Your life is not pointless. You should live your life to the fullest. You should live your life out with a purpose. And if you're not, you're wasting it. That's what I, I truly think that. But that's it, you guys. Like I said, um, we're kind of revamping everything right now. We're coming back with good videos, better videos. I'm trying to work on having people edit for me so that we can release more videos. I'm trying to work on revamping our Patreon so that you guys actually get something for for donating um, trying to revamp our merch trying to get this podcast going we have a lot of things coming that are in the works guys so definitely stay tuned make sure you subscribe make sure you have the bell on because people never get notified to my videos even with the bell on sometimes so make sure you're doing every you can, everything you can to stay uh, in touch with me go follow me on Instagram go follow me on discord all that stuff and I'll see you guys in the next video So you're 18 years old? Yeah. You want to get involved in the adult industry? Yeah, I do. Why don't you tell me why? Um, well, I kind of have some financial issues, and I looked it up online, and it seems like 
an easy way to make some money yeah. and not have to work quite as hard. This is true. Go ahead and sit back, relax. This is a very relaxed interview. Have you done anything like this before? No, never. Okay. Do you think you can do something like this? Um, I think I can. I want to try it at the point. I'm home for the night, I had a bad day uh, 11 years I dealt with that the same way uh, Emotions spiraling, a pilot screaming Mayday, mayday, porn screaming, make way Make room in your life, I'll be your Potiphar's wife I'll ease your pain and your strife I'll be your reason to lie So you can eat with your eyes Make love with me in your mind I've been looking for you I just wanted to help you I know you're struggling right now It's been a while since I felt you I know just the thing that ease the strain Let it overwhelm you Just forget about your problems With the way that I touch you I know you think about it You open pixels